It's been exactly 50 years since the Apollo 17 vessel journeyed to the moon, with Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt being the most recent humans to set foot on its surface. Some of their findings were locked away and stored for a future generation. As the soothsayers say, that patience is the key ingredient to genius. The moon's samples collected back in 1972 were a bit of a mystery at the time. Scientists didn't know what was in it or what they could salvage from it. But after a long half-century wait, humanity is now ready to uncover more answers about our friendly neighborhood satellite and perhaps reveal even more of a reason to send humans back to the moon. Welcome to Space Rumor. In today's video, we'll reveal NASA's findings from the moon samples that were collected and vacuum sealed 50 years ago from the Apollo 17 expedition. Learning for the Future Lori Glaze, the director of the Planetary Science Division at NASA headquarters, said in a recent statement that NASA knew science and technology would evolve and allow scientists to study the material in new ways to address new questions in the future. Unimaginatively named, or should we say unimaginatively numbered, 73001, the sample that was collected by astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt in 1972. In the course of the Apollo 17 mission exactly 50 years ago, on December the 13th, and no, it wasn't a Friday, it was a Wednesday. Although it would add so much more mystery if it were a Friday, don't you think? The astronauts collected the sample by hammering a 14-inch tube into the lunar surface while another sample was collected as well that wasn't sealed. The tubes were filled with moon rock and dust. Several samples were collected, but only two of them were vacuum sealed. The more exciting ones are the vacuum sealed samples which are now being opened and are corded to contain substances called volatiles. Volatiles are gases that evaporate at regular temperatures and, eerily enough, this sort of sounds like the beginning of a science fiction horror movie. We're not too sure what might be in there. The sample in question is being opened at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston by the Astromaterials Research and Exploration Science Division, or ARES for short. This division safeguards, studies, and shares NASA's collection of extraterrestrial samples. This process is being overseen by the Apollo Next Generation Sample Analysis Program, a team of scientists who aim to learn more about the sample and the lunar surface in advance of the upcoming Artemis missions to the Moon's South Pole. Hence, the sample was named ANXA 73001. The ANXA initiative was designed to examine these especially stored and sealed samples. The ANXA 73001 Sample ANXA 73001 is part of an Apollo 17 drive tube of samples collected by the astronauts. They hammered a pair of connected 1.5 by 14 inch tubes into the lunar surface to collect chunks of rock and soil from the moon's Taurus Litro Valley. Spookily enough, these samples were taken from a landslide, but more on that later. These segments were then individually sealed in drive tubes under the vacuum on the moon before being transported back to Earth. Two drive tubes were vacuum sealed this way, and 73001 is the first to be opened. The other half of this drive tube, 73002, was transported in a regular unsealed container. The sealed tube has been carefully stored in a protective outer vacuum tube and an atmosphere-controlled environment at Johnson Space Center ever since. The unsealed segment, though, which was transported in a regular unsealed container, was opened in 2019. A fascinating collection of grains and smaller objects known as rocklets were recovered from the tube that lunar geologists were very keen to study. It's safe to say that they totally nerded out on it. Scientists are now focusing their attention on the sealed lower segment. 
NASA writes, The temperature at the bottom of the core was incredibly cold when it was collected, which means that volatiles like water, ice, and carbon dioxide might have been present. Scientists will be particularly interested in the volatiles in these samples that have been collected from the equatorial regions of the Moon because they will allow future scientists studying the Artemis samples to better understand where and what volatiles might be present in those samples. Fantastic Volatiles and How They're Extracted As we mentioned before, volatiles are gases that evaporate at regular or normal temperatures. Now, the amount of gas expected to be held in this sealed Apollo sample is likely to be very less. The process of removing these substances from the sample container is another tedious process. The device being used to extract and collect the gas is called a manifold. This technology was developed by Drs. Alex Meshik, Olga Pravdivtseva, and Rita Parai from Washington University in St. Louis. Dr. Francesca McDonald from the ESA, or the European Space Agency, was the supervisor on the project and helped the team in building this special tool that is now being used to cautiously pierce the container holding the lunar sample without letting out any gas. Yes, that does sound a little funny, but you get the point. The team has created and strenuously tested the one-of-a-kind system to collect the extremely precious material in the form of gases and solids which are sealed inside the containers. If scientists can carefully extract these gases, it'll be put through further analysis and identification using modern mass spectrometry technology. This technology has evolved to determine extreme levels of sensitivity in recent years and now can precisely calculate the mass of unknown molecules as well as use that data to accurately identify them. This doesn't only give us accurate and improved measurements, but it also means that the collected gas can be divided into smaller portions and shared with several more researchers from other departments of lunar science to conduct a variety of distinct tests and studies. NASA's Ryan Ziegler, the Apollo sample curator, is the person running the show at the moment and overseeing the entire process of extracting the gas and rock. Ziegler's job isn't only restricted to the curation of the sample, he's also responsible for properly preparing, cataloging, and sharing these samples with other research scientists. In a recent statement from NASA, Ziegler said, A lot of people are getting excited. The University of New Mexico's Chip Shearer proposed a project over a decade ago, and for the past three years, we've had two great teams developing the unique equipment to make it possible. It's great to see the foresight from NASA's scientists to be able to plan these processes out decades in advance, as well as wait for the ideal moment to delve back into old projects. The Mysterious Landslide The location site from where this sample was extracted on the moon is particularly interesting as well since it was taken from a landslide and, as we mentioned earlier, is pretty darn spooky. And here's why. Julianne Gross, the deputy Apollo curator, said in a statement, Now, we don't have rain on the moon, so we don't quite understand how landslides happen on the moon. This dilemma gives researchers the perfect opportunity to study the sample to try and understand what would cause these spatial landslides in the first place. What lies ahead? During the early days of February, the outer protective tube was the first to be removed. The outer portion didn't contain lunar gas, indicating that the sample inside has been well sealed off. On February 23rd, the scientists began a weeks-long procedure focusing on getting through the main tube and harvesting the gas contained inside this tube. Later in the spring, the rock will then be carefully removed and broken up so that it can be distributed amongst other departments and scientific teams to be studied further. After 73001, there will be only three lunar samples still sealed. When will they in turn be opened? Ryan Ziegler further explained, I doubt we'll wait another 50 years, particularly once they get Artemis samples back. It might be nice to do a direct comparison in real time between whatever's coming back from Artemis and with one of these remaining unopened core sealed cores. 
The analysis of these samples are connected to NASA's Artemis missions, which will send humans to the moon for the first time in more than 50 years. The agency wants to send humans back to the moon in 2025. The Artemis project aims to have a plan on inclusion where it's slated to take a woman and a person of color to the moon's surface for the very first time. Large amounts of gas should then be collected and the experiment currently being conducted helps to better prepare for these missions. So, what are your thoughts on the 50-year-old Apollo 11 sample? And what do you think these volatiles will reveal about the moon's surface and geology? Tell us in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching Space Rumor.